Tinopa, Nevada, September 2026. This place is a total shithole. To be frank, the young operative stationed on the ground wasn't entirely sure what his partner was referring to. The ramshackle rat trap of a motel they were doing their best to fully lock down as a meager two-man unit, or the entire Death Valley area in general. It could have been either. Aaron Boone hated the desert. He hated the heat. He hated cacti. But in this case, given exactly how they'd come to be raiding this seedy, sorry excuse for a small-town pit stop, Cape Sparrow was fairly convinced he was referring to the motel. While his partner despised anything that reminded him of the southernmost states where he was born and raised, the one thing he hated more was when a job went wrong. And Cape couldn't disagree with him. There was nothing worse than when a target they'd spent six days tailing got wise to them, spooked, and made a break for it. So what, you're the country's top authority on shitholes now? A snort of laughter was the first response to Cabe's off-handed comment. Their shared sense of salty humor was why they'd initially hit it off so well, when Aaron had first taken Sparrow under his own wing. I was born in a shithole, the veteran agent said. I'm not gonna die in a shithole. You got a visual yet? Cabe was murmuring through the corner of his mouth so as not to attract the attention of a pair of civilians strolling across the parking lot toward him or toward the main entrance of the Casa de Mojave. Gabe had acquired enough basic Spanish during his time in the States to know that this dilapidated hovel was a pretty sorry excuse for a casa, regardless of one's standards. Negative. Head up, punk. If she's here to meet with allies, we could be dealing with her backup before any of ours arrives. Gabe smiled cordially at the couple as they passed him, keeping it casual as if he weren't currently anchoring one hand to the butt of his sidearm beneath his v-neck. He returned their greeting in a feigned Midwestern accent, hiding his own not-quite-cockney timbre. Foreigners had a tendency to stick out like a sore thumb in parochial little towns such as this. Retaining some sense of anonymity was always preferable when one worked for a secret international reconnaissance agency. Yeah, ten four. The younger agent eventually replied, casting a quick glance about himself. Other than the occasional car rolling by, the parking lot and immediate vicinity were mostly deserted. Unless their assailants, war jargon for any individual presenting a physical threat, had a sniper's advantage, sneaking up on him would be a difficult task when the streets were this empty. You worry about inside. <laughs> you know I've got your ass covered. I know it. A brief pause, followed by a soft sound Cabe knew as Aaron unsheathing his K-bar. He'd hold it in his left hand and cross his right over it to steady his sidearm. Cabe knew his entry tactics, and, normally, he'd be right there at Aaron's side. But they simply couldn't risk their target slipping away through the front door. Okay, this is the room she checked into. Stay sharp, Sparrow. Let's keep this nice and clean. Going dark. Going dark two of his least favorite words when he was on the outside and his partner of almost 18 months was alone on the inside. Not that he lacked faith in Aaron Boone's ability as a field agent. On the contrary, he damn near idolized the man. But until his comrade and friend was at his side again, that perpetual amber alert in the very back of his head and his heart would not be canceled. Seconds pulsed by. It didn't take long for them to swell into minutes. All there was to do during these periods of radio silence was wait and keep watch. Unless you happen to be the praying sort, which neither Agent Sparrow nor his partner were. I don't think she's here. Agent Boone's report aired to mixed reactions. While Cabe was relieved to hear that familiar voice speak in a way that didn't sound panicked, if their target wasn't in her room... That meant she was somewhere else. One by one, the hairs at the nape of his neck prickled to attention. Aaron had entered through the side door of the motel. So if he hadn't stumbled across her in the corridor, yet Cabe hadn't seen her leave via the main entrance. Shit. At the serrated edge of that solitary syllable, every hair on Agent Sparrow's body stood up on end. A surge of adrenaline bubbled up in the pit of his stomach, sending a wave of heat through his skin. 
But before he had the chance to address it, the other agent's uncharacteristically frantic voice was hammering at his eardrums again. Shit! Shit! Sparrow! Hit the deck! She's got- Everything seemed to happen in the same, torrid, jet-propelled second. It wasn't just through his earpiece he registered the explosion. He heard it as well as felt it, and the cheaply paved portico was ripped away from the soles of his tack boots as he was hurtled thirty feet across the forecourt before skidding into a parked sedan. Red-hot light and white-hot pain simultaneously assailed his senses. A heavy darkness threatened to tug him into unconsciousness. <sighs> no! Both hands instinctively shot up to shield his face as a torrent of flames burst from the main entrance and shattered the glass of the doors. Similar blasts pulverized the upstairs windows. Crumpled in a heap against the car's rear tire, Cabe was powerless to do little more than watch as plumes of fire and smoke poured from every visible orifice of the old motel. This ain't happening. This ain't real. The buzz of static from his earpiece was audible, deafening even over the shrill whistle in his head, indistinguishable from the ringing of the alarm blaring inside the motel. He was aware of the urgency, and that he had to say something, but his tongue refused to do what he told it. The asphalt was searing hot beneath his bare hands as Cape peeled himself up from where he'd been thrown, clawing his way to his knees. His sense of balance was disjointed from the blast. He slumped sideways in a helpless, graceless sprawl, stuttering into his calm tech with no further regard for any unassuming bystanders. Uh, Aaron! 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 The lack of response from his partner wasn't just troubling. It was otherworldly. The harbinger of his absolute worst nightmare, transcending his dreams and becoming reality. A small segment of his brain retained its lucidity, and it listened shamelessly as Aaron's name gushed from his mouth again and again. It watched with no intent of interfering as his shell-shocked body hauled itself upright. It didn't even judge him as he ambled haplessly towards the motel, both bloody forearms braced against the billowing smoke and palpable heat, hollering into the din for his partner. Aaron, come on! Please! It wasn't his fault. He was far too distracted, far too distraught to see the fist, until it had connected with him. Cabe was almost unconscious before he even hit the tarmac, spitting up blood and choking on the breath that was knocked violently from his lungs. Okay. Was the last thing he heard before he fully blacked out, a voice he wasn't able to recognize or process and wouldn't ever be able to retain. Get him into the trunk.